Joining me now is Congressman Richie Torres. He represents New York's 15th congressional district in the Bronx. Congressman Torres, welcome. Thank you for joining us. First off, what do you hope will come from the meeting between the president and Mayor Adams? Well, the mayor should be given the freedom and flexibility he needs to crush the epidemic of gun violence in New York City, but he needs federal support. Even though New York State and New York City have among the strictest gun safety laws in the country, those laws will only take us so far because guns easily cross state lines. The majority of guns recovered in New York City, in New York City crime scenes, are coming from the South, are coming through the iron pipeline from the South to the Northeast. And the iron pipeline has flooded New York City with more guns than we've ever seen. And there's been an explosion of gun violence as a result. So we have to crack down on gun trafficking across state lines. And Mayor Adams, to your point, has released a blueprint to end gun violence in New York City. So it's obviously something that he is concerned with. He mentions, however, deploying more officers. As you know, there are many people uh, in New York City who believe more officers on the street is not always the best solution. What would you say to that? Well, the mayor's plan is comprehensive. He advocates for a crackdown on gun trafficking. There's an emphasis on social services. Uh, but he, he's also reinstating the plainclothes officers unit. You know, the, the notion of defunding or abolishing the police has been thoroughly discredited. Uh, since 2017, the murder rate has risen by more than 60 percent. And so police are not a magic bullet, but the police do play a central role in promoting public safety. And, and so I agree with the mayor's approach. And Congressman, as you know, there has been an uptick in attacks on New York City's transit system. A woman died last month after being pushed onto the subway train tracks. A 62-year-old man was also pushed onto the tracks, but luckily sustained only minor injuries. What specifically needs to be done to address violence within the transit system? Well, in the cases that you cited, um, the perpetrators of the violence clearly had severe mental illness. Right? And in my view, people who pose a threat to themselves and to others, those who have severe mental illness, should be put in a secure facility that provides them with mental health services. Um, in America, we have a severe shortage of psychiatric beds for those who should be institutionalized. And, and instead of putting these people in a proper facility, many of them are left to languish on the streets or in the subways and often pose a threat to themselves and to others without taking proper medication. So in my opinion, we have to invest more in mental health for the severely mentally ill. I would agree with you. I think that mental health is, is a very important component of safety. And is, is the mayor tackling this as well as part of his comprehensive uh, you know, plan to alleviate crime? The, the mayor is doing the best he can with the resources he has, but the federal government should play a role in providing mental health care to the severely mentally ill. You know, there's a policy known as the IMD exclusion, which essentially prohibits the use of Medicaid funds for psychiatric hospitals, for psychiatric beds. And as a result, there's been a shortage. Um, so I'm in favor of removing the IMD exclusion and ensuring that we have enough psychiatric beds for those who need them so that we're keeping, we're protecting people from themselves and we're protecting the public from people who might have severe mental illness that causes them to behave violently. And Representative Torres, we know that January was a particularly difficult month for your district. 17 people in the Bronx were killed in a fire. How is the recovery process going after that tragedy? Are you getting the resources you need? Well, there will be a long road to, to recovery. You know, we're in the process of connecting residents to housing and services, um, but the road to recovery will be long. You know, there were mothers who, who, who lost, it was a mother who lost her toddler, there's a father who lost his whole family. There are children who lost their parents. And it's going to take a long time for them to, to fully recover. A full recovery, in some sense, is not even possible because what's been lost is, is irreversible. But there's a whole community of people in the Bronx who are going to support these families. And we're going to ensure that these families get the housing and services that they need. Devastating. Our hearts are with those families. And Congressman Richie Torres, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Absolutely.